<coughs> okay, welcome to week three of Cyber Wizard. So today, today uh, I'll just show some stuff about regular expressions. So I think the most fun way to show this is just to play around on the command line. So that's what we'll do. Okay. So what are regular expressions? They're this little language you can use to match patterns in code. So a really simple example would be here. I'm just in. Uh, REPL, if you just type node, it, you're in calculator mode, so you can evaluate expressions like this, right? A plus B. Okay, cool. So built into JavaScript and most other languages is a regular expression engine. This is like a little micro language that lives inside of the parent language, and it lets you match patterns. So uh, a lot of the time with regular expressions, you'll see them start with a forward slash, and this is actually built into the language. So a really simple example would just be to match um, a text literal, just literally some text. So if we want to match cow in a sentence, you can do forward slash cow forward slash, and then do this this method called that test, and we can say cow says moo, which matches. We get true. Uh, if I change that to be the wolf says moo, it doesn't match. Um, so one thing right away is, what if uh, what if cow is capitalized? This isn't going to match. So there are different options you can pass to the regular expression. One of them is case insensitivity. So we have forward slash pattern forward slash, and then after that you can put some flags. One of the flags is I. So that's case insensitive match. Um, so this. This isn't too useful, right? We can just match, we can just see whether something is exactly in string. So there are some extra, there are some extra things we can do, like, for example, if we have a, maybe we want to match um, cat, or we want to match the word, uh, maybe we want to match boop, but also beep, right? So we want to match both of these things. So what you can do is use a wildcard character. So if we use the dot character, this is basically is like a wildcard. It means match any character. So now if we say the robot says beep, true. The robot says boop, true. Um, we could even make up whatever we want. There. That also matches. So that's dot. So first of all, there's just string literals match dot matches any character. Um, there's some more things we can play with. So we can do uh, a question mark to mean optionally match a character. So if we say we want to match, for, for example, we want to match the strings boop, but we also want to match that with three zeros, uh, three O's. You can do that with a question mark. So if I put O question mark, this means Oh, this last character, that's that's totally optional. You can match it or not match it if you want. So that matches, that also matches. If I put more characters, though, it doesn't match. So question mark, um, this means match or not, what else. Um, so what if we want to match uh, one or more characters? You can do that with plus after a character. So just like question mark matches zero or one times, a plus matches one or more times. So that will match as many O's as we want. Um, so it won't match no O's, but it will match at least one O. So there's some other things we can do. So that's a plus. There's also a star. This matches um, zero or more characters. So star zero or more um, times. So and then the plus matches one or more times. Okay, so now that we have these basic primitives, we can start doing some other fun stuff. So one so the nice thing about plus, star, and question mark is that we can reuse them in a lot of different contexts. So if we want to well, so first, um, we saw dot already, if this matches any character, but what if we only want to match some characters? You can use brackets for that. So open 
open square bracket, close square bracket, and then inside you can specify all of the valid options. So if I want to match uh, O's or E's, so I want boop or beep, um, then this will match BOP and BEP, but it won't match BOOP, right? So what we can do is reuse those repetition operators that, that I was just talking about to do that one or more times. So now it matches, BOP also matches, but we can put as many O's as we want. We can even mix and match the O's and E's. That also matches. Because the character, so this is called the character class, and it means match as much, uh, match those two things as much as you want. It's sort of like having um, different different options that could, that could work. So inside of a character class, you can also specify ranges. So a really common one is if you want to if you want to match all numbers, you could do zero dash nine means match everything from zero to nine. So if I do that with uh, a number, it'll match. Um, so that's character class. So a really useful thing now that we've started to match different kinds of character classes with different kinds of repetition operators is maybe we want to say, oh, hang on, uh, we want uh, some numbers, some digits, right? Some zero through nine characters, but we only want to see those at the start of a string. So if there's some extra garbage in the front, that shouldn't match. So what you can do is put a caret that's uh, shift six on a US keyboard little caret operator, and that says start at the beginning. So now, if we have some garbage before those digits, uh, it won't match. So this is called an anchor. It kind of uh, says that it has to start at the beginning. There's a corresponding one, a uh, dollar sign, that says, oh, it has to run all the way to the end. You can't have anything else at the end of the string. It has to end on that pattern. So if you might remember from Vim, uh, first week, these are also Vim keywords, and that's not a coincidence, because regular expressions actually come out of these old, old, old uh, ancient text editors, especially the grep program. So grep is a program that was kind of ripped out of those early systems, and it lets you do similar kinds of matches. So if I pop out of the command line real fast, I'll document uh, caret anchor at the beginning. So with grep, we can match patterns too. So here I've got Moby Dick. You've seen this in many of my other examples. So maybe we want to match um, some patterns here. So we can do uh, wh.le, which will match whale, but also match whole. So we can also use the character class like this. And now we mostly see whales, but occasionally we see whole. W-H-O-L-E. Um, there's a lot of stuff in grep that will work like this. You can also use dot. And now we'll get also the word while with an I. Um, suppose we want to match the word whale or we want to match the word whaling, though. To do this, you've got to use... Uh, there's, a, there's a special thing that you can use with the pipe that means or. So if we want to match the text whale or whaling, you can write it like this, whale or whaling. Um, dot test, whaling true, also whale will match. If you want to anchor this group, this like either or kind of thing, you can use parentheses. So um, if we want to start with whale and end with whaling, like that. So if we have extra text, then because of our anchors, because of our carrot at the start and our dollar sign at the end, our pattern needs to be anchored. So anchors and whaling and shipping, etc. <laughs> so here we have whale, it matches. Um, another fun thing you can do is because because there's actually some shared characters in both of these patterns, W H A L, we can rewrite this. So W H A L and then we can make E or ING, and that's the same kind of pattern, but a little bit a little bit shorter to write. Um, some other so that's so that's
things like A or B match A or B. So some other things we can do with, with this kind of uh, syntax is um, when you when you use parentheses like this, you're actually creating what's called a capture group. So now we can move from just simply matching text to actually doing something interesting with it, grabbing text out of strings. So there's another method in JavaScript. It's different for, for most languages, but you can do dot exec on a regular expression like this. And we say whale with dot exec, we get back this input. So this looks a bit a bit weird, but if you index it with um, with uh, square brackets, it's sort of like an array. So the first item that matches is the entire string that matched, and index one is is the first capture group. If we had more capture groups in here, so say we had a wh was also in a capture group, that would appear in one, and then the second part e or ing in this case it's e is index two. Um, so if I change that to whaling, index 2 is ing. So you can use exec like this. Uh, the other way to, to describe this is um, the other way around. So we can also put the string first, and all strings have this property dot .match that you can pass a regex to. But these are basically the same thing. So, and then you can do index 2, just the same. So that's uh, dot .test and dot .exec. So this is how we can start to pull out uh, text in files. The same, the same kinds of rules apply for, for grep. So if we want to do whale, ing and whale, like this, um, you can just specify capture group like that. Hang on. All right, so grep, unfortunately, has slightly different syntax uh, from JavaScript and a lot of other languages. If with grep, you, you have to escape uh, the open parens and close parens with um, a backslash. Oh, and then I think uh, the pipe as well. It's kind of silly, but for historical reasons, it works like this. Um, but now, what's cool is we have whale, and then occasionally we should also get whaling in our, in our pattern. So here's one. There it says whaling. Mm -hmm. Great. So, and uh, with grep, instead of doing a, you know, after the last forward slash, putting an i, you do a dash i. I was, I was showing some of this in the Unix lecture the first week. So now we'll match um, capital W whale as well. Right. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little more about capture groups. So suppose we have our whale whaling. So W-H-A-L-E or I-N-G, like that. Um, and we do exec on it. So now we'll get E for uh, index one. So sometimes you want to have an or group. You want to like group an expression, but you don't want to capture it. So what you can do in that case, like say you have, you want to uh, wh or t. So this will match whaling and also tailing, whale and also tail. But maybe we don't want to capture the first part. So right now this shifts all of our indexes. So. But suppose we don't actually care about capturing the first part. You can use question colon to not capture the first part. So now one is uh, this part. This says, oh, forget about this match. Um, so capture group and then non-capture non group. OK, so what we can start to do now that we've got capture groups is also um, can replace some strings. So the captain was all about the whaling. Um, suppose we want to replace this with fishing. We want to replace whaling with fishing. There's a, a method in JavaScript, and it's similar in most other languages, called replace. Replace, as its first argument, can take a string, in which case it just literally replaces some text, or it can take a regular expression. So if we do forward slash, uh, and now we do our whale e or ing um, and replace it with whatever. Then we'll get the captain was all about the whatever. Um, but you can do this other thing uh, with the dollar sign to refer to a capture group. So maybe we want it to say um, fishing. 
and it's all about the fishing. Um, but we want to actually take the value of the capture group. So this will be E or ING. So if we do a dollar sign, um, dollar sign and a number that refers to one of the capture groups. So dollar sign one will be ING. So the, the captain was all about the fishing. Then this will be a little bit silly if we change it. But fish with an E, whatever, that's fine. Um, so you can do this for as many dollar signs as you want. So if you have more capture groups, like um, if you want to capture the first part too, WH or T, um, and we'll maybe just stick it at the end. Fish <laughs> fish ring, or we can make it say tailing as well. Fish ting. Cool. So that is replacement. What's really fun is that you can use the same kinds of approaches on the command line. So there's this program called sed. So if we have a text file, whatever.txt, we can make, we can say the captain was all about the whaling. He fished all day. He whaled all night, all the night long, searching for the big whale whose name was the big whale. Okay, whatever, some garbage like that. And now um, there's this program called SED you can use to match and replace, just like we were doing with dot replace. So SED takes this, this syntax where if you want to do a replacement, you start it with S forward slash, and now the pattern, so we can specify whale, I, or E, or ING. Um, and now, another forward slash, and then you can do the replacement text. So, you can say, um, space. <laughs> and now if we run that on whatever.txt, the captain was all about whaling, oh, hang on. Uh, set also takes the old, um, the same syntax as grep, where you have to put a backslash in front of things. There we go. So, the captain was all about the space. He fished all day and spaced all night long, searching for the big space, whose name was the big space. Um, we can also refer to the capture groups, like, um, I'm going to add a, oh, hang on, I think there's a, oh right. So, instead, to refer to something, you do backslash, and then the number instead of a dollar sign. Uh, so, we can see spacing and and spaced all night long for the big spacey. Cool. What's really great is this exact same syntax will also work in Vim. So if I open that file in Vim, now I can do colon s forward slash and uh, w h a l e open paren with a back with a backslash in front uh, e uh, backslash pipe ing. Yeah, oh, sorry. So we can use exactly the same syntax as them. Um, so we'll say space, and then backslash one. And now to do, well, I'll talk about G in a sec. And it replaced it on this first line. If you want to replace it everywhere, you can put a percent in front, and that will replace it on all the lines. But, so there's another thing, whale, 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 whale. If I write a pattern like that, and run this program, run this replacement, it will only replace the first instance of that pattern on each line. So there's still all of these whales left in the text. To replace everything, you can specify a flag uh, G, and G is global replace. In Vim's case, it means per line, but there we go. Now we've replaced all of the whales with space, um, with G. Okay, so, don't save any of those changes. The same thing works with sed. So if I uh, take our sed pattern and add and run it, then um, we get whale whale still. But you can use g to globally replace each of those whales with space. What's fun is uh, with sed you can actually do dash i and it will edit a file in place. So if you want to if you want to replace all of the instances of a pattern um, and update the file, just do dash i, and now our file has changed. So that's a really handy thing if you have like some very big file and you want to update a bunch of stuff. You don't want to do it by hand. Very simple way. Yep. Could you just go over again how the index of the capture? 
picture group work? I'm not seeing exactly like what does it replace and why does it keep I and G and E with uh it's this one. part. Yes. The backslash one. Yes. So that means the capture group, the first capture group. Um, here, I'll, I'll pop into Node again to kind of explain this. So if we have some text, one, two, three, four, and do dot, like, we'll do a dot replace, right? Um, maybe A through Z plus um, with. In this case, we're in Vim, so or we're in JavaScript, so we can use dollar sign in front of the number. So to just oh, hang on. Okay, I don't know what's going on right now. What? Okay, I think I'm confusing myself. Um, Oh, I see why. You have to put friends around it. Right, of course. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's weird. So, um, when you put friends around something like this, so suppose I want to replace uh, one, I want to put angle brackets around it. So, I can use dollar sign one to refer to what matched in here, inside of the parentheses. Uh, so, if I have like space and then another A through Z plus, I can do like um, plus, plus, plus. And that refers to the second group of parentheses in the regular expression. So get that. Does that make sense? Why does A through an A through G only matches the first chunk, right? Because you didn't one per line or uh, so A through Z matches anything that's A through Z. So the regular expression engine goes, okay, the first character is an O, that's A through Z, N. That's A through Z. E, that's A through Z. Space, that's not A through Z. So it stops matching right there. So this pattern has finished. And then it goes on to the next one, which is a, just a space. So it matches that space. Now the next pattern kicks in, A through Z. It's like, okay, T, A through Z. W, A through Z. O, A through Z. Space, so it finishes. And then it finishes, so this, this replacement runs on the text. Is that? Uh, in if I do exec, you mean? Yeah. Oh, you mean uh, in replace? Yeah. It doesn't match anything. Uh, exec is different though. If you do exec, exec with a pattern like this, the zero index will be the entire string. Uh, hang on. Oh right, uh, exec is is a regular expression method, not a string method. So you have to do match. Um, ma you do match on a string, and if you have a regular expression, you do exec. Dot exec, one, two, three, four. Yeah. So zero is the entire string, one is the first capture group, two is the second capture group. Right, capture groups, making sense. Okay, so there are some more things we can do in capture groups that are worth discussing. So What's really cool is, uh, okay, so here we have our capture group, right? We've got A through Z um, and a space. So what if I make that a capture group? So now I've got A through Z, a space, and that's its own capture group. Oh, hang on. Got to swap these around. Dot replace. A through Z plus space, um, and that can be our capture group, right? But, hang on, I don't want to replace anything, I actually just want to match, so, but, okay, but. <laughs> Many, we want to match more words, right? We want to match one or more words followed by a space. You can just put a plus after the parentheses and it takes that entire pattern and replicates it. So that will match, um, let's see. Hang on, I think I got this wrong. So A through Z. 
Z plus will match one, and then, oh, okay. So A through Z one should match one space, and uh, then it should match two spaces. I wonder why it's matching three. That's a little bit strange. So anyways, um, that's, this doesn't actually make sense. Let's see, okay, if we have A through Z, we'll match O, plus matches one, space, and if we make that into a capture group, that still matches one, we make it plus. Oh, I think I know why. It's because match is a little bit screwy unless you specify a dash G. So we'll use exact because I forget. I don't use match for this reason. Um, like that. Okay. It's still matching three. I don't know why this is. I think with curl it would be different. But um, okay. You can totally do that. I'm claiming. I'm not sure why this is. Okay, well anyways, there's some um, some other things you can do for shorthand that you may have seen. So instead of doing um, 0 through 9, for example, if we want to match some text, um, 0 through 9 plus dot test, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, um, it's true. You can use the shorthand uh, escape D, which it just means the same thing. So you can, use, you can either use that in a capture group or just by itself. It means the same thing. Uh, so D is... 0 through 9, and there's also uh, back, backslash w, which means a through z, 0 through 9, capital A through z, and underscore is the same as dash w. So if I do plus dot test, whatever, and if I anchor that, so I anchor that to the start and to the end, test it, it's true. If I put any other characters, though, it will, it will, um, not match. So the reason why underscore is in there and a through z and 0 through 9 is that this is a really common pattern for matching variable names in programming languages. Um, so programmers decided that that was important enough to have a very terse shorthand for. Um, so there's dash w. There's also uh, s, which matches any kind of white space. So for white space, you could have a space, or you could have a tab character or a new line, or a carriage return, or a line feed, all of this kind of stuff. Um, so if I want to capture all of the white space, I can do dash g to capture everything, and dot exec, one, two, three, four. So I will get the groups. Or it's very you can just do S, which matches white space. The cool thing about each of these characters, D, W, and S, is that to invert them, you can just capitalize them. So to match anything that's not a number, you can do capital D, which matches. But if I put an actual number, it's false. Um, that goes for white space, so it's it's pretty common to use uh, backslash capital S to match any kind of word. So I can do that. Um, or if I make a group, so I want to capture like every, I guess this would be common for replacements, so if I want to do one, two, three, dot replace, <coughs> um, every word, so this will match anything that's not white space. That includes numbers and whatever else that, that would work. Um, replace that with with XXX. And we can do it globally. There we go. Replace every word, but the white space is preserved. So that's how replace works. Um, white space A through Z, A through Z, 0 through 9 underscore. Okay. Um, 
really not that much more to regex. This is pretty much it. Um, there's there's some small things like uh, if you want to match a pattern a number of times, like we want to match beep uh, like e, we want to make two to five e's. You can use uh, curly braces and say like the ranges. So this will match. If I anchor that. This will match beep because two. It'll also match three and four oops, and five, but not six with curly braces. And I can make that a pattern as well. So if you want to make that a pattern instead, that will match um, BE. Oh, hang on, just, it has to be two of them, or three, or four, or five, but not six. Why do you have to anchor it in the sense? Oh, I'm just anchoring it um, just because. So if I have extra stuff, then it won't match. But if you don't have extra stuff, then it's fine. You don't need to really anchor it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really common, though, if you just have a string to anchor it, because then in case you get extra unexpected input. Yeah. So it's just looking for one character that repeats two or five times. Uh, it's looking for this capture group, actually. And I repeating mean, before, that. without the B. Yeah. So, okay. so this would match uh, beep, but not bep, and not six of those or more. But that many is okay. Yep. So this is what I was trying to show earlier, actually, about how you can just um, take like replacement. So this will map as many as we want. B b b b. If you leave off a number on a capture group, that means two or more times. So plus is the same as one comma. Whoops. Oh, I guess not. You can do that in some engines. Not, not in JavaScript, apparently. But, whoops. Oh, hang on. I, oh, I have a plus afterwards. That's why. Yeah, that's why. So that's the same as plus is uh, one comma. Or you can have like three comma to be like three or more. So if I don't have three, I'll have two it won't match, for example. And you can leave a comma off for the first one to be as many as you want, but no more than five. So that, hang on. Or maybe I'm misremembering that, but something like that. <laughs> okay. Um, and if you have a capture group, repeat it. You can also have uh, capture groups inside of groups, but that gets a little bit tricky. Um, like if I had an E or an A. What? Oh, you have to match your parentheses, so there we go. So I can match B A, B A, B E, B E, B E, B A. Matches. Yep. Any other questions? This is like, you can. I think the best way to learn this stuff is just to play around with it, to uh, have have fun little problems, maybe download some Project Gutenberg books and have some fun with SED and REPL and play around in REPL, and then that's pretty much all that you need to, to do to okay. use regular expressions. I use regular expressions every day. I probably write at least one regular expression a day every single day. Uh, so these are very these are very widespread. Once you kind of learn and internalize how to use regular expressions, you start using them everywhere. So let's see. Uh, let me just pull up some code and I'll sh dig up an example really quick. Hang on. Uh, regular expressions. So if I look in HTML template, this is something that I made a few days ago. How many regular expressions are there? There's one. Replace. So I'm doing a replace <coughs> into on like a fragment of some HTML code to add a little style equals thing at the end. Uh, it's usually not a great idea to use regular expressions on HTML because they're strictly not powerful enough. But if you know exactly what the format is, then it's okay. Um, that's an example. So another example might be um, the robot code. That probably has regular expressions in it. Notice I'm using a regular expression to, to search for regular expressions. There's one. Uh, so this is replacing the name that you type in the robot, um, the robot SVG to 
do robot code converter, it converts the robot name to uppercase and gets rid of anything that's not uh, A through Z, for example, because the robot, the robot cannot really deal with anything that's not A through Z because it's very primitive technology. Um, so other examples. So hopefully that helps answer your question. So regular expressions are a great little tool when you're pretty certain what the input is going to be like, but sometimes you have to do a structured data like JSON, HTML, and generally speaking you shouldn't use regular expressions to manipulate those kinds of structures. Uh, you can use regular expressions to manipulate little pieces of those, that's fine, but not the entire thing. That's usually a bad idea. Instead I would use like a parser, like a, and parsers include regular expressions internally, but there's a lot of other stuff that you have to be aware of when you're parsing HTML and and JSON structured data. But for quick little things, it's great. Uh, one other thing I use all the time is if you want to change the indentation levels of some code. So, or uh, maybe you want to take take a command. So if I'm if I'm in Vim and I've got like some files. So if, if I'm in Vim and I've got some some data, right, and I want to turn this into a JSON list, how can I do that with regular expressions? First thing I can do, select all of the lines, uh, so that I just popped into visual mode with capital V, did G to jump to the end of the file. Now I can hit colon and I get this handy little thing that's um, this whatever that is uh, quote less than comma quote greater than, which just means the selected output. Now I can do S, and I can match anchor, which just means whatever the first thing is, replace it with a quote. This will add a leading quote to every line in the output, like that. Then, if I want to add a trailing quote and a comma, I can do the same thing. So I'll just dollar sign, which anchors to the end of the line. Then I'll use a quote and a comma, and now I've got commas. So I get rid of the last comma, and I put a uh, square brackets around it, and now I've got an object. So I could save that as a JSON file, whatever.json, and whatever.json is valid JSON. Very cool. Um, it's a little bit better just to use json.stringify for this kind of stuff sometimes, but if you have to hack something really fast, this is a fine way to do it. Okay, any, any other questions? Expression within a function. Uh, do you mean like inside of a function or as a replacement? Inside. You mean like if I have a function and I'm like uh, return um, x dot replace like this? How do you mean? This example would be using a regular expression in a function. So I just made a function called replacer, and I did some regular expressions internally to replace uh, the input with, like, replace beep and boop with robot, the word. So that's pretty common. Also, if you have like a stream of input, and you only, if you have like a stream of input and you only want parts of it, you can use programming to get at those parts. So another common thing um, that's kind of related to that is if you want to have a custom replacement, so uh, you can do dot replace. So if I want to match um, beeps and boops, every one of them, uh, you can pass in a function for your replacement. So the first argument is the entire string that matches, and then the additional.
functional arguments are the capture groups. So the capture in this case would be the EO part. So I can return X plus cap plus Z. And that will return X, E, E, Z. So that's another way you can you can use functions with regular expressions uh, built in replace. Because sometimes using like the dollar sign one to kind of syntax isn't really powerful enough for the kinds of stuff you want to do. Like um, you can capitalize, for example. That's really difficult to do otherwise. Yep. Any more questions? And that's because replace has two arguments. Uh, yes. Yeah, the first one is the regular expression, and the second one is the replacement, which can be a string. Uh, and you can have like dollar signs in your string to refer to capture groups, or you can have a function that just handles the replacements for you. Yep. There's a website that I found really handy called Regexer, like R E G E X R. No, E. R E G E X R, like six. Dot com. And it lets you, it, has, it gives you like sample text and lets you test out different kinds of expressions and it'll highlight them in the sample text. Yep. Yeah, so that's a character class and we see slash w. Also, if you really want to learn, how I learned regular expressions is there's this thing on Linux systems that's very easy to use called Perldoc from the Perl language. There's one called Perl Retut. It's specific to Perl, but it covers a lot of the basics of regular expressions in this pretty approachable way. And then also uh, Perl doc, Perl ref is the best document ever. I still use this occasionally when I need to look up uh, an obscure flag or something because it has all of the, like here's all of the anchoring stuff you can do, like dollar sign, caret, you can use dot and escape characters. There's a uh, ranges of occurrences and character classes and everything is in here. So uh, a fun thing too is there's all of these advanced features in some regular expression engines that are super handy. Um, like look ahead assertions and look behind assertions and that kind of stuff. You can't really do much of that in JavaScript, but if you're in Perl for whatever reason, then you can. Perl, fun thing about Perl as well. Uh, so if I've got a file, um, I can edit in place just like I can do with sed with dash i. So if I do dash pi, I can do a regular expression like ease with ee. -E -E. <coughs> and that just edited the file in place, which is kind of fun. Lots of stuff you can do. Okay. So, oh yeah. You, you could string these very long. Not too long. <laughs> um, I don't know. So usually when your regular expressions start to get pretty long, it's a good idea to just use code to sort of break them apart and handle different parts of the input separately. I would say, like, instead of trying to do everything in one long regular expression, like maybe a replacement, you just replace the first part with one regular expression, then another one to do the second part. Because then they're sort of independent, a little easier to manage. So another good thing to do is find a regular